Welcome to the Sharp 600, brought to you by Covers.com. I'm Rob Cressy, and I'm super excited to be jamming with you. Joining me on today's show to talk about what's going on with the Super Bowl from a sportsbook perspective is Jay Cornegay. But first, the sports world lost a great one in Kobe Bryant over the weekend. His passing is unfortunate, and instead of it being a time of sadness, I prefer to look at it as a time of celebration. So here's my quick tribute to Kobe Bryant from the lens of sports betting. And what I want to go to is the last game of his NBA career, April 13th, 2016. He played 42 minutes and scored 60 points. Many books had the point total for him scoring at anywhere between 21 and a half and 25 points. Naturally, there is heavy action on the over, which in true Kobe fashion, he covered easily. But here's what's even more important. The Lakers were four-point underdogs in that game against Utah. Not only, did the Waker, not only did the Lakers win that game straight up, but the over-under of that game was 196. The final total, 197. That's right. Kobe left fans with his NBA career with a money line underdog win, and he hit the over. Will you be in Las Vegas or New Jersey for the big game on Super Bowl weekend? 2020 is Cover's 25th anniversary, and we're kicking off the year by hanging out at sports books in Las Vegas and Atlantic City for the big game. Join us at the books in the link in Las Vegas in Bally's Wild Wild West in Atlantic City to meet the covers crew to talk sports betting and to score some great prizes. In Vegas, we're giving away a $1,000 bankroll for the big game. And in Atlantic City, we're giving away a VIP viewing area for the Super Bowl. Plus, we will also have other prizes and tons of free swag to give away. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to get more details on when we'll be at the link in Bally's that weekend. And joining me to give you insight into what's going on with Super Bowl betting from a sportsbook perspective is Jay Cornegay, Executive Vice President of Race and Sportsbook Operations at Westgate Superbook. You can follow him on Twitter at Jay Cornegay. Jay, great to have you back on the show. Good to see you, Rob. So one thing that I enjoyed about our previous conversation, which was leading into Thanksgiving, is the casual nature of things and sort of how you took in Thanksgiving betting. So let's move this bad boy to the Super Bowl side of things. What is leading up to the Super Bowl like for you working in a sports book and around the sports betting world? Well, there's a lot of prep work involved. Um, we actually started working on the Super Bowl just on the, the odds aspect is about three weeks ago, Rob. We started cranking these things out. I got a great team here, first of all. And uh, we've done a lot of prep work, not only for the odds, where a lot of people look at the propositions and all, but we also do a lot of prep work for um, our high-end players that are coming in. We, we are involved in special events. We have three gigantic parties here, each having about 2,500 people. We have another free party that's probably around 1,600 people, and then all the happenings that we have in the book itself. So uh, we're probably going to be entertaining over 10,000 people on Super Bowl Sunday. Um, so we, we do a lot of prep work there. And of course, everybody looks at the, the propositions. And as I mentioned, we started working on that about uh, three weeks ago. Uh, you know, we got about four or five guys, uh, you know, headed by you know, Ed Sammons, Jeff Sherman, those guys are terrific. They've been, we've been together for about 27 years. And uh, so, uh, yeah, we kind of lock those guys in a room and uh, they hash it all out and uh, we're able to uh, get all those propositions uh, posted. So let's stick with the props for a second. One thing that I notice often is the juice on the props or the lines that you're going to get. You're seeing minus 125s, you see minus 140s, you see things that we traditionally don't if we're just taking Chiefs minus one or an over under there. Can you help us understand that a little bit more? Because I'll even give an example. I saw a 
Raheem Mostert uh, over, I think it was like 56 and a half yards prop somewhere. But then I saw it minus 140. And while liking it, going into it at the over, I did not like that bad boy at the minus 140 because from a sports betting perspective, I just don't like laying that much. So what really goes into that side of things? And are you playing on the fact that more people are going to be betting casually on this so there's more of an opportunity? You know, when we mess with the money line, when we get to that point, let's just say longest rushing attempt by most start. It started off at 17 and a half. It's down to 16, right? At times, we cannot agree on a certain number, but we are able to compromise by adjusting the money line. Let's just say, you know, one of us or three of us have it at 16 and a half and two of us have 17 and a half. Um, you know, we might compromise and say, let's go 16 and a half over $1.40. That's how we come up with it. But it is a discussion. And then we'll go over some numbers. Uh, we'll go over some highlights to state our case. And we just come to our agreement. Again, we got to do almost 500 of these things. So we got to keep it moving. But uh, sometimes these can take 20 minutes. Sometimes it takes 30 seconds. From a being a smart, informed, better standpoint, are betting props smart for the casual better compared to the way that we bet through the other 17 weeks of the season? Well, I think if you do your homework, just like anything else, you could probably find some value uh, in, in, on certain propositions, especially if someone is you know, moving the line off of our number. I mean, you know, it, it really comes to like our, our data, our statistics, our algorithms versus these others that are out there and I mean it's well publicized when we open these things up for the first day and a half it's all really sharp guys dominated by sharp guys really sharp guys actually some of the sharpest in the business that are out here you know we, we limit them to two bets uh, each trip to the window and then they go back to the line and uh, you know they'll do it all over again and looking at some of these numbers and, and just some of the movement, which I, we can go over later, but um, it's just what their numbers and what their data is telling them versus ours. Now, as far as the casual better, you know, you can take a look at that. And I'm not saying our numbers are stronger People than notice. stronger than the other guys, but uh, if you do some homework and, and look into it, just like anything else, you might have uh, some, value there that you could take advantage of but most people don't do that as you know most people are just shooting from the hip and thinking wow you know most starts definitely going to have a rushing attempt more than 16 and a half yards give me the over <laughs> that's that's how most of these bets go how much does the number that other books in vegas lay down for that same action affect what you guys do because once again if we look at the regular season uh you likely wouldn't see one book all of a sudden at, at Chiefs minus one and a half and another all the way up to minus three. But when we're looking at these props, we're starting to see a little bit of variability. How much is what you guys do as opposed to when I'm doing some of the research on prop betting, they're saying, hey, shop around to see if you can get better numbers, whether it's early or later to get um, middling opportunities or things like that. that you, you bring up a valid point there because a, a to answer your first part of that question, we, we really, we don't really look at others. I and mean, we know they're out there and we can tell by the way that money is coming in, especially the first night that let's say most are, we put up over under 80 and a half rushing yards. All right. And if somebody has 70, you know, pretty much when it's all said and done, when the smoke clears, we're going to pretty much be very close to the same number at 74 and a half, 75 and a half, something like that. And we know that a lot of people take those uh, opportunities to, and try to take advantage of those middling opportunities where others have strictly opinion uh, as far as, you know, it, its value. And the others are trying to middle these things. And it, it really depends on the proposition. If it's usually a high number, like a rushing uh, yards by Mostart, he's, um, I'd say that 
because it's such a high number, most likely there was somebody that had a lower number than us, than our 80 and a half, because right now we're sitting at 74 and a half. And that's exactly what happened. I think uh, the, the market really settled in at 74 and a half, 75 and a half. All right. So let's now go to what you do during the Super Bowl. Are you going to a Super Bowl watch party or is this straight? Listen, there's so much leading up to this for you. You're like, you're working a ton. Like, give us a little bit into your, what is this Super Bowl like for you? Um, well, the beginning of the day is certainly uh, a lot of customer service, a lot of uh, meet and greet, uh, a lot of shaking hands and, and, and greeting all our top players. And, and then uh, it turns into selling, you know, them into a, their comfort spot, wherever it might be. Um, and that really leads all the way up to the, the, uh, the uh, you know, kickoff. Um, obviously, I'll be looking at the numbers. I'll be looking at, uh, you know, where we stand. I'll be informing my uh, senior reports, uh, you know, where we are, if there's anything to report there. Uh, there'll be certain propositions that will probably catch our eye that, like, we, we definitely need a, a touchdown scored, you know, in this game. Like last year, that kind of caught us off guard a little bit because I, I don't think I've ever remember mentioning that where, you know, we didn't have a touchdown scored in the game going into the fourth quarter. And, you know, we were going to lose a healthy six figures if it, you know, ended up to be a 6-3 game or 9-3 game. And uh, so I, I had to uh, inform them of that at the beginning of the fourth quarter, which put everybody on edge. That's always a fun call. Um, but, uh, once, once the game starts, I, I, I still go around and check on some of my top players. I'll be roaming around the back room, seeing what, uh, how the props are coming in because we're, we have a, a good, uh, five or six guys that are really watching it closely and, uh, posting props as they happen. So in, in, in the spirit of good customer service, we try to post these things as fast as we can so people can cash them, you know, as it happens or, you know, as soon as the, you know, the game ends, you know, but as you know, a lot of them have to wait until we get that box score. Uh, but there's others that we can post as the game progresses. All right. So speaking of when the game ends, so when the game ends, what's now for you? Because as sports betters, we're like, all right, this season's done. I'm already on the next. People are like, let me see win totals. Let me see MVP. Like, how quickly are you working on next season when the Super Bowl ends? Well, it, it certainly doesn't happen that night. Uh, we are still, you know, cleaning up around here as we, we will have lines to uh, cash tickets. Yes, unfortunately, there's that many that still come up to the counter and get a physical ticket. Uh, we are, ex you know, as, as we've seen in years past, we will have lines for the next two and a half days of people cashing. So the onslaught, as soon as the game ends, uh, it can be a little hectic out there. You know, this is uh, at the end of the game, and, you know, there's uh, more than a few that have been partying all day, and uh, there's uh, now a winning side and a losing side. So if you, you know, we're, we kind of keep an eye on the crowd a little bit, you know, as far as, you know, uh, it, patience can be a little short. Um, you know, uh, people might be a little bit more sensitive than they were before kickoff. And, uh, you know, there, there's a little, some snappy uh, conversations out there that we try to keep an eye on. As far as moving forward, uh, it's usually a couple of days. We, we like to take a, a, a breath and, you know, we'll start looking and, and uh, you know, March Madness will be on the horizon and uh, we'll start focusing on that. You deserve a day off or so in between seasons. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I know I won't be playing golf the, that fall. Now, maybe Wednesday after the Super Bowl. We'll see. Uh, um, I'd like to get out again, just kind of forget about everything, and then, uh, you know, maybe, you know, hit the course for a little bit and just kind of reboot and then get right back at it on Thursday. Nice. So let's get to the game itself. We're seeing Chiefs one and a half or one point favorites on the 49ers, 40, 54 and a half or 55 on the over under. Can you give any insight into sort of where the action is going on this game? Yeah, as, as you know, when we we opened the line at Pickham, it was about 80 percent of the tickets were on Kansas City. 
Well, that's leveled off now. You know, we're looking at about 66% now in Kansas City, ticket-wise, straight bets on the, on the point line. Uh, the over-under is certainly still lopsided as we opened 51 and a half, gone up to 54 and a half. And uh, at one point in time, it was about 90-something percent on the over, but it's uh, leveled off there too. As now we're down to about, what, 74%? on the over as far as the money line that's the only thing that's really uh in, in favor of san francisco as we have about 74 percent of the tickets on the money line uh in uh, it, on uh, the 49ers so a little bit uh, uh if, you, if, if you see people betting the 49ers that's usually on the money line uh you know they're getting that even money i, I really don't blame them um but uh, everything else is favoring Kansas City, but not to the levels that we saw initially soon after we posted the, the uh, opening line. One thing I'm curious about is with this total here at 54 and a half, and you're hearing, oh, it can't go higher. Everyone's going to start taking the under. But what I do know is the majority of the public action is going to come in in the last 48 hours until the game time. So why couldn't this go up more? Because – I don't know about you, but I don't want to root for the under if I'm putting in a Super Bowl number or putting in an over-under ticket. Yeah, well, it, typical betting patterns are always on the over and usually the favorite, or um, they tend to migrate to the better quarterback, uh, and we know who that is, or, and at least the ones that is getting all the headlines, and I, I we understand that. So um, the – the support that the Chiefs are getting, uh, the support and action that we've seen on the over is very typical uh, for Super Bowl uh, betting. Um, I don't really see that changing that much all the way to kickoff. I, I expect uh, those same betting patterns to, to continue. But I will say that I know there's some support on San Francisco out there. And even though I think the ticket count and maybe even the money side will favor Kansas City, I expect some bigger plays on San Francisco here where we might see more pick em games or pick em lines uh, in the next couple of days. So would you recommend then if someone likes San Francisco to take it now as opposed to wait until a little bit closer? Yeah, I, I would, you know, I don't like to recommend that just in case I'm wrong, but uh, you know, if you see a one and a half out there, I would certainly you know, eyeball that if you're looking to bet San Francisco. Uh, I don't think those are going to last uh, much longer. Um, it, it really depends on how some of these places, uh, you know, book their game and, and, and uh, you know, where they stand on futures, uh, that kind of thing. They, they might want to see, you know, San Francisco money. I know that, you know, up north, up in northern Nevada, they're going to see all San Francisco money. I, there's no doubt in my mind that those guys up there are going to be cheering for the Chiefs, where it might be totally different down here in southern Nevada. So last thing for you, let's talk about the live betting side of things. How big will that be for the Super Bowl? And is this something that continually grows year after year for you? Yeah, that, that's I'm glad you brought that up because we're, we, we certainly are encouraging everybody to sign up for mobile accounts. And especially if you're going to plan on wagering during the game um, and no matter where you are, you don't have to be a resident of that state to open up an account, whether it's here in New Jersey or somewhere else, you know, you just remember that those mobile accounts are only accessible and you're able to use those while you're in that particular state. So go ahead and sign up early. You'll be able to utilize in-game wagering, which is a lot of fun. But I, I expect it to be bigger than ever. I, it obviously is growing uh, each and every day for us. Um, and uh, for the Super Bowl, I expect, uh, I, I expect it to be hot and heavy. Um, I, I, I'm hoping for a good game. If the, the game tends to get boring or lopsided, it will take away from those numbers. But uh, I think we're all anticipating a, a solid, closely contested game. Yeah, for me, I think I found more interest in waiting to put action on this game because 
minus one, one and a half, pick them, whatever. But now first team to score. Now I've got a little bit more to go with. Maybe I can scalp some value just by watching it a little bit more, knowing that right now there's just not a lot for me to go on. Yeah, that works, especially if your team, um, let's say you like San Francisco going into the game and San Francisco scores first, you know, seven, nothing you know, then, then your value is pretty much out the window on that side, but it certainly works. And you might have, you know, a better opportunity if all of a sudden you're down by seven. Okay. And then you're getting, you know, three points or maybe three and a half depends on how they look, but uh, I can understand that. Um, but uh, I, I'm not patient like that, Rob. <laughs> I, it takes a little bit of patience, but you could do a little bit of both. I think that's what most people do. You play a little pregame, and then you have an opinion after watching, you know, a few series. Then you're like, okay, you know, this team is really dominating, you know, physically that, uh, you know, you might want to uh, reload and play some in-game. Jay, I really enjoy jamming with you. Where can everybody connect with you? Uh, they can uh, D direct message me at, at Jay Cornegay. Uh, that's probably the easiest way uh, for those that, uh, um, you know, want to email me. Should I give my email address out here? I don't know. We usually keep things on social because we have a very <laughs> engaging community. So if you've got a question for Jay, what I recommend, shoot Jay a question on Twitter at Jay Cornegay. Maybe yeah. that'll be the best way. There you go. I think you're right. Not that you don't have anything going on in the next week or two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I welcome, I welcome those. And I really do try to get to them as fast as I can um, and, and try to answer, uh, you know, all of them um, and, and try to explain what we got going on here. You know, there's a lot of people that have opinions. I, I, I really don't like to give out picks or anything like that. You know, I'm still on this side of the count on of the counter and there's a reason for that. Uh, so, uh, uh, but as far as, uh, you know, questions on the industry or, or any type of, uh, you know, special event that we might be having here or anything else, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get to it as soon as I can. And I want to hear from you. Have you laid down your Super Bowl action yet? Are you going to be playing props, uh, getting action down now, or are you waiting for live betting? You can hit me up on Twitter at Rob Cressy and make sure you use hashtag sharp 600 and be part of our community and also make sure to use uh, make sure to tag at covers. And one thing that really helps us out is we love getting your feedback. When you subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, it means the world to us because it helps others find this podcast. And remember, if you want to be a sharp, don't be a square with your bankroll. Be disciplined with your money management. <laughs>